welcome to Mummy Meets Matilda. Today I wanted to do a video all about IVF and my feelings about having a IVF donor baby. I have watched a few of these videos when I was going through IVF and also I watched them afterwards because I find them really useful and there isn't actually that much content here about donor eggs but I have found a really good channel which I will leave down below in the down bar for you if you are interested in more information but I just wanted to make a video today about my thoughts and feelings prior to having Matilda because when I was going through my IVF journey I wasn't ready to share anything with YouTube so I didn't do any videos about the process or anything like that it was all very raw and emotional to me but now I'm coming on to just over a year since our IVF treatment and my little girl turns one in October I feel like I am ready to open up a little bit about it and share my thoughts and feelings in the hope that if someone stumbles across this video who is going through IVF with a donor egg then maybe it will help and reassure you so I I'm going to open up and if you've got any bad comments about it please just exit this video because what I'm going to say might be a little bit raw and I, I have found within the year that unless someone's going through the same as you they don't quite understand it even me and my husband we don't connect at certain things because like Matilda is his little girl biologically. Matilda is my little girl but she isn't biologically my little girl. So things, unless you're going through it, is a little bit different. So even if you're watching this video, please have an open mind and just listen to what I'm saying. Um, without further ado, let's start. And I'm gonna start with, start with my emotions when we started the IVF and obviously I had my thoughts and feelings prior to the IVF starting but it was really throughout the IVF where I was really focused on worrying about the bond that me and Matilda would have and it was playing on my mind a lot. It was playing on my mind that she would hate me, she would grow up to hate me because I'm not her biological mum and you know there's plenty of reasons why you could hate someone for that and you could hate them because you're not their biological mum, uh, you could hate them because of what process that they've been through um, to get you, like some of them may think you've taken them off their biological mum and I joined a Facebook group which was about donor conceived children and also parents and to be honest that group didn't really help because there was a lot of donor conceived children that were giving their point of view but not actually seeing it from a mum's point of view and they a few of them were in hate of the situation that they've been put in but it's like telling a woman that they can't have children because you don't have your own eggs so therefore you're not allowed to use someone else's eggs to have your own children you just have to suffer and not have children and that is a message that I got off the website so if you are looking in all these Facebook websites I would really recommend not to um, because there was also a grandmother there posting that she's upset that her daughter has given her eggs away for donation because one of her grandchildren will be walking the planet but no it's not your grandchild because it's simply just a cell that is being donated as much as the cell has their biological attachments it's nothing more than the cell and it really got to me and made me angry and I really wanted to write a message from someone who wants to be a mum so bad um, to her because 
it just upset me but obviously I didn't I just left the group because it's not a good group to mix with um, so yeah if you are looking at those groups they honestly don't help and I would recommend avoiding them as much as you can but if you can find some blogs or videos on YouTube about it then they are really good because they are actually people's um, opinions and experiences so my going through the pregnancy was hard I remember my mother-in-law asking me whether I have or feel a bond with Matilda in my belly and I said no and even though I felt bad saying no that was my true feelings and opinions at the time and as much as I adored feeling her moving around in my body and kicking my tummy and feeling the lovely butterfly feels that you feel when you're going through pregnancy I didn't have a bond or a connection with her actually until the night that she was born and I remember being up late at night and the midwives had to come in and tell me to go to sleep. It must have been about 12 or maybe even later and I hadn't slept. I was just lying there, lying next to my little beautiful girl in her hospital bed and I was just staring at her so peacefully sleeping, wrapped up in her swaddle. And that was when I just felt a whole load of warmth and love that is when I felt the connection with her and I just felt this bond, this like mother bond that I'm her mum and she's my little girl and no matter what we go through through life I am here to support her and care for her and protect her and that is the moment that I felt a bond. So if you are currently going through or looking at going through donor conceived child it is probably totally normal to feel like that and from my experience prior I was really nervous about how I would bond with her with her not biologically being mine but honestly I can tell you now a year on she's nearly a year I love her so much and I don't see her as not mine I see her 100% as mine she's just an embryo which some lovely lady out there gave to me and I have nurtured her, I grew her in my belly, I have watched her grow, I've watched her say her first words, I've watched her crawl, I've watched her do her walking and all those experiences of what a mum gets to experience so as hard as it was before she was born it's a totally different feeling now and it is so nice to be able to tell you that because it's like a, being on a bridge and at the moment prior to your IVF you're at the beginning of the bridge and me I'm at the end of my bridge I've been over the bridge I've been over the emotions the scares of bonding and what if they hate me when they're older and growing up and to be honest those things still play with me now but not as much as they did prior to the IVF um, so yeah my advice is speak to people who you know will understand you whether it be your mum your dad your grandparents your best friend your partner if you've got someone who you can open up to and speak to about it then that is the best thing someone who's going to get you or even if they can't give you any advice because from my experience unless someone's going through the same as you they just don't understand it no matter how hard they try um, but even just being able to vocalize how you're feeling to someone and offload it is really really good and it really helped me so even if you just got someone you can offload to that is brilliant um, someone you trust also from the beginning of the IVF I told my close handful of friends that I was going through the experience because for things like when you're going through IVF and it might not work and there's no guarantees on it um, a lot of my friends 
behind the scenes were also trying for children and because they knew that I was going through the IVF they actually didn't tell me until I got my positive which personally for me was a really nice thing I really appreciated that they were there to support me and they didn't do something that would potentially be rubbing something in my face that I really longed for uh, but because they were in my close friends group and they knew what we were going through, they were there to support us. And that was really, really nice. Um, in fact, my best friend didn't even start trying for a baby until we got our positive. And now we have two beautiful children growing up together. And that just meant so much to me because I think it would have been a struggle if someone close to me would have had their positive and we'd still be trying because uh, even people who weren't close to me like pregnancy announcements were a real struggle to me uh, about a year before the IVF and through the IVF because not only you know I had my positive but it was always on the line it was always this may not work at like six weeks nine weeks and we did actually have three bleeds through the pregnancy where I was told we were miscarrying. And that was a really horrible thing to learn and to go through, just watching yourself bleed and not knowing where it's going. But that is a whole different story. If you do want me to speak about that, I will. Um, but I am very lucky in the fact that my daughter is here and it obviously was just some effects maybe of the medicine or my lining that wasn't um, working out, which is why I was bleeding. But through the pregnancy, I just, I had to take every day as it came. And at the beginning, I was testing every single day. As soon as I'd done the two week wait and I got my positive, I remember I bought loads of cheap tests online on Amazon and I was testing every day. It got to the point where I was testing every time I went for a pee. Um, it was really, really bad because I wanted her so much and yeah, don't test all the time. That's my advice. Uh, I think it just makes the whole thing worse and if we do go down the route for another child uh, I definitely won't do that I will try and be good but I know it's different when you're in the situation to when you're not in the situation um, but yeah I was just feeling loads of thoughts of how will we bond what will she think when she grows up how will I tell her that she's a donor egg child? Because it's totally up to the parents whether they are telling their child if they're a donor egg child. But I did a lot of research on it and from the research that I've done, it is better to start telling them when they are younger, like from when they're born. And I have actually been doing that with Matilda. Um, even when she was kicking, even when she was in my bump, I was telling her, it doesn't mean anything to them and they're not going to understand but for you as the parent it makes it a whole lot easier because it's not a new situation which you're getting yourself in you are very used to sitting down with your baby and telling them the lovely beautiful story of how they came along so that was kind of the advice that I had been given and the advice that I had done but I highly um, recommend that you do your own research and whatever works for you and your family do that there's going to be so many people around you telling you different things but honestly you've got to do what's best for you and talk about it with your partner make sure you both agree um, for us it was important that Matilda knows and more for me, because I'm the one that's not her biological mum, I would find it easier to start telling her when she was younger rather than just to bring it up when she was like six or even later when she's 10, for example. Uh, also, from those donor sites when I was on them, uh, there was a lot of people saying that they weren't told till they were really older and they have a lot of resentment for their parents um, for not telling them. But on 
the side of being a donor egg mum, I can totally see why they wouldn't tell them because it is a hurdle and it does feel like a hurdle opening up and telling them that they're biologically not theirs and the the kind of dread that you'll be hated or they'll think differently of you or they won't feel the same love that they would do if you were their biological mum. I totally get both sides from looking in the middle, being a donor egg mum but also having a donor egg child. Um, but as a donor egg mum I love Matilda so much and I will be there for her through anything that she goes through in life and hopefully she will feel that she can come to me for anything because that's the kind of relationship I want. And in the UK it is if you go through a donor egg that is unknown at the age of 18 they are legally allowed to find their donor so they are allowed their donor's last known address um, and maybe some other details in order to get in contact with them and in the beginning that made me cry it made me a little bit worried about if she would go off with her biological mum who didn't really grow up with her or anything um, and I did find that hard but actually now a year on I am really supportive of Matilda if she gets to that age and she wants to seek her biological mum like the donor egg because she's not her biological mum but you know what I mean biological mum uh, the donor lady then I'll be more than happy for her to do that because she will have answers to questions that I don't have and I just want to support Matilda in any way I can for her welfare um, and I was told some stuff about how if they're told later on in life they're more likely to need help and therapy than if they're told in the beginning um, so yeah they're just little bits that I know but do your research and do whatever is best for you and your family um, there will be a lot of people with different opinions so throughout the whole pregnancy I couldn't really bond with her and then when she was born that evening I just didn't sleep I was looking at her I was just filled with warmth and it was the most amazing thing and even now I love her she's coming up to a year old I love watching her smile I love listening to her babbling and saying her first words she's crawling now which is amazing um, I'm watching her learn to walk and she calls me mama and that gives me warmth every single time I hear it um, so yeah if you're at the beginning of that bridge stay strong stay on it I promise you you will feel so much better afterwards and there is always counseling to help you if you are feeling funny about it every single um, treatment place that does donor eggs will offer counseling for IVF so always ask about it if you are worried about things um, seek counseling because it may help you it may make you see things differently I personally didn't take counselling, I didn't really feel it was right for me but if it is right for you then go ahead and go for it um, it could help you see things differently so yeah, in a nutshell prior to Matilda being born I was really nervous about whether we would bond it was scaring me if she would grow up to hate me uh, it was also scaring me that I'd have to tell her and how I'd have to tell her thinking about the ways of telling her that scared me and made me feel upset um, it was just a hard thing to deal with and then now I'm a mum I think completely differently so I find it a little bit easier to talk to her now 
about being a donor egg. I've done a lot of research on the best ways to tell them and also I have found some books as well which I'm not using the books yet because she's too young but when I do use the books it, um, I will share about it on a video if that would be of interest to you. So I hope this video can help if you're going through IVF with donor eggs and I hope it wasn't a little bit mismatched. I have tried to just tell you how I feel. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching. I will see you very soon. Take care. Bye.